On the left, you see Van Meter, a recent open win. Jordan here on the right, green, white, hexproof. Representing the Chicago Cubs, now so close to a World Series. Yeah. And it's a chilly day here in Milwaukee. You'll notice the difference between a Midwesterner <laughs> and somebody yeah. from out, of, out of, uh, not in the area, of course. Jordan rocking the short sleeves, no problem. Chris, he's a little bundled up. Chris is on five cards. Normally that would be a concern. Now, Dredge, he, with some hands, he could really just not care. <laughs> yes. But Jordan will start on a Razor Verge Thicket and Glade Cover Scout. So we, the boggle is now in play. Chris draws and just says go. I'm assuming that Chris's hands probably got at least one, maybe two faithless looting. He was just hoping to find a red source. The, the Vancouver Mulligan enables him to scry. He missed there, unfortunate, and Glade Cover Scout on turn one. About worst case scenario for Chris here. <laughs> yeah, we want to start the tournament. You mull to five, keep a zero lander, miss, then your opponent plays a slippery boggle. <laughs> OK, this isn't how we drew it up. Uh, Polak will swing with one. Rather than uh, suiting up the scout, he played Core Spirit Dancer. That's something which will do more damage. You get him a lot more value. Mm -hmm. I suppose he doesn't think he can't be under much pressure. What I think is interesting here is in Jordan's spot seat, do you think he knows what he's playing against based um, on how this is played? Which seems weird, right? Chris has played nothing. But M Mulligan to five, no play. That's not necessarily a sign of dredge in the modern format. In Legacy, it might be a little bit more telling. Um, I would think it's a combo deck, though, right? Yes, I would certainly be leaning combo. A deck that only needs to yeah. make one or two land drops. Chris isn't like gonna play Thought Seize Tarmogoyf next game. Right. Yeah, that deck would certainly go to four <laughs> right. here. So Jordan now is gonna starts to move forward. It's going to be Spider Umbra that draws a card off Core Spirit Dancer. Remember that pumps the Spirit Dancer one one for the Umbra and two two for it being an aura. So it's a three three pump. Jordan taps the other land and makes the same play. So Spirit Dancer now has six power. The scout has one, so this is a swing for seven. And this is another advantage that Jordan is getting because Chris is not making land drops. Frequently, as a hexproof player, you don't want to run out your spirit dancer naked on turn two. There's a big concern of it getting hit by a lightning bolt, to terminate before he can get off the ground. But here he's just running away with the game. Veteran move here by Chris. He never hit the land drop. That turn was the turn he drew his eighth card, and he conceded before his discard step. Yep. Any card that he could have discarded there would have been a giveaway. Dredge does not have much overlap with the rest of the modern format. And there's a lot of very good sideboard cards against Dredge. So he's going to try to get a game one feel to the game two for this match. Yeah. Now, if you talk about good sideboard cards, green-white hexproof, because it's such a linear deck, is a sideboard of silver bullets, generally. <laughs> And unfortunately for Chris, Jordan has the silver bullet for this matchup. Yep, two copies of Rest in Peace. Uh, very aptly named when you cast that against a graveyard-centric deck. Yeah, it exiles the entire graveyard when you play it and prevents any further cards from being added to it. It really just shuts down the dredge deck. Uh, in addition, Jordan is actually playing one copy of Graft Digger's Cage in his board as well. Yep, a little back up there. And one thing about playing against Dredge in Modern is frequently their turn two, they can be going into that turn with a, with a good hand with a couple prized amalgams already in play. Uh, say if they cast a Faithless Looting, end up dredging, um, flip over a Golgai Grave Troll, trigger some amalgams. Sometimes the rest in peace is too slow. So you're kind of hedging there with the split. So on Chris's side, Team Card Hoarder this weekend, most of them on dredge. We had a chance to talk with Kent Ketter before this tournament. You know, and he said, this is one of the few tournaments they broke the five-minute rule on green white hexproof. Now, now, what is the five-minute rule? Ken describes it as generally the rule is you don't talk about hexproof for more than five minutes. We said they were concerned enough about this matchup that they actually built a board plan for it. Um, tell me about it. It looks like there's a lot of action in Chris's sideboard. Yeah, so we go over the board. There's two Night of the Bone, three Nature's Claim, a Bajuka Bog, two Golgari Charm, two Abrupt Decay, an Ancient Grudge, a Lightning Axe, two Collective Brutality, and a Dark Blast. A lot of this stuff doesn't come into play here, uh, but the big finds here, Nature's Claim. It can go one for one on any aura that might be, say, granting a creature lifelink on uh, Jordan's side. Sure. Frequently, the lifelink is the biggest factor in a matchup like this. Also, if Rest in Peace is coming in, it's going to be big there. And then two Golgari Charm also has the mode of not only destroying enchantments, but Which I like, yeah. Yes, that is very significant on its own. But you can also give minus one, minus one to all of Jordan's creatures, say, in response to an aura pumping them out of that range. You can really blow the hexproof player out with a play like that. Yeah, when Chris is on the play, he goes, land go. 
Jordan plays maybe a Slippery Boggle, says go. If Chris plays a second land and just passes, leaving up Golgari Charm, it could be a huge blowout. Jordan goes to play an Aura, minus one's the team. Yeah, that would be a, that could be a game ender. Yep. This is also a matchup where Nautila Bone is technically playable. Um, you can bring this in in certain hands. If, if Jordan is not gaining life and he's just dealing damage, Nautila Bone can have kind of a time walk effect. Maybe it's enough for Chris to actually be able to punch through. It's not the biggest hit in his sideboard, but it is an option he has available. Well, over on the site at Star City Games, we're going to be here all weekend, but we have our weekly sale that we've been running all season here. It's a different sale every week over on StarCityGames.com. So you're going to want to check it out as we get the end of this weekend. We have had the Kaladesh booster boxes and bundles all on sale in addition to standard singles. So some of these newer cards, which we're going to see in action this weekend, those are going to be on sale, and you're going to want to check those out because at... 10.59 Monday. So the end of the weekend, we'll have a new sale, which means this one will be gone. So head on over to StarCityGames.com. Kaladesh is a great set. It is one of the more powerful sets released as of late, uh, showing really flexing its muscles. If you watch the Pro Tour in Standard, it, it just mixed up the entire format and actually is making waves in Modern, too. Not to mention the quality of the draft format. I wouldn't mind having a sealed booster box just to get some friends together. Yeah, I had to made it out to... Uh, Grand Prix Atlanta two weeks ago. That was just a fantastic tournament. Both sealed and draft with a lot of dimensions to it. I was really happy with the event. Personally, I've been casting a lot of Dynavolt Towers, and that just feels great. <laughs> it's like a planeswalker yeah. that your opponent can't attack, and I get to do so much nothing. It's perfect. Really like in the new standard format, and uh, really excited to see how we see things shake up and the impact of modern. I, I want to see Chris cast some cathartic reunions. I'd like to see him cast a card. Yeah, this game. maybe play a land, make a land drop or two. <laughs> do do something. Well, we'll see on this one. I'm actually interested to see how Jordan has sideboarded, if at all. Yeah, you know, frequently you just don't do any sideboarding when your opponent doesn't show you any cards. Uh, like yeah. we said, he's somewhat informed. It's likely he's playing against a combo deck. And Rest in Peace is good against a deck like Storm, right? Yeah, Storm. Uh, the danger we was another other decks that can keep zero land hands. Uh, ad nauseum Yeah, could. wouldn't do anything Elves. there. Against Ad nauseum. So, like, maybe we bring in our Aether Sworn Cannonist because it's good against Storm. most of the decks yeah. that are missing land drops. Tends to be good against combo decks. Both players have kept on seven. Also interesting if Jordan's even weighing that at all in his mulligan decisions. Probably just looking for a functional, proactive hand. Well, now he knows. Chris Van Meter starts game two on Gemstone Mine and Insolent Neonate. Odds are that Chris is not playing Vampire Beatdown. <laughs> Unlikely here. We see a good grip full of auras for Jordan's side. He'll start on a forest, and here is Slippery Boggle. Looks like Pass. a foil. I like it. And Chris end steps going to use the ability on Neonate to discard Golgari Grave Troll, then draws it back, dredging six. He'll hit two Narc Amoebas, it looks like. Uh, a big find here, actually. Two Narc Amoebas will go into play. He has a Grave Troll in the yard for next turn, and he also dredged a Blood Guest, so that was a really hot six. Yeah, the only thing he's really missing from that package is a uh, prized amalgam or two. He has a copy in his hand, and the Faithless Looting did just hit the bin, so it won't take him too long to find a way to get that into the mix. And now the decision for Chris is draw or dredge. He does not have a second land in his hand. You see him eyeing that Grave Troll. And one thing you're asking yourself when you're playing in this position, for a lot of lists, you, you kind of lean on life from the loam to start hitting your land drops. Chris does have two copies of Dakmore Salvage, so that does incentivize him to dredge if he just makes that as his land drop. Pretty big miss here for Chris, and actually shows off a lot of his sideboard. Nature's Claim and Golgari Charmer Mills. The only actual graveyard card he hit on that next six was a copy of Scourge Devil. This is a one of in his main. It's a common from Shards of Alara, which you may not be familiar with. A 3-3 three, three that unearths for 5. When it unearths, all of your creatures get plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn. So if Chris goes wide, this is, I guess, an Anthem effect. Yeah, and it will trigger your prized amalgams because the unearth ability is a creature entering the battlefield from your graveyard. Uh, an interesting piece of technology. We've seen Rally the Peasants in kind of this slot previously, and this is a good proactive upgrade, in particular if you're expecting your amalgams to be in your graveyard. 
wasn't the greatest card in that limited format. No, it was actually pretty poor. I mean, it is a 3-3 three, three for 5. That's not... <laughs> That's, that's well below the rate of good limited play. That's not the hallmark of playability. Interesting decision here. Chris goes and passes back. He could have swung with two Narcopy Buzz, but chose not to. But no land drop, and that's that's really the interesting part here, right? So Chris didn't hit his land drop, but at the same time, he knew that would happen. He, he dredged six with two of his draw steps. So mm -hmm. He never had a chance to hit the land. Right. He really just wanted to find some amalgams and a third Narc Amoeba. And back over to Jordan's side. And as for leaving the Narc Amoebas back, it's very unlikely that a chip shot is going to matter. This matchup is all about Chris effectively snowballing, executing his game plan, recurring prized amalgams, maybe getting in with that Scourge Devil with a big Alpha Strike. Um, right now, he just wants to not take as much damage as possible. It's, uh, there's no way that Jordan's attacking Slippery Boggle into a Narc Amoeba and just trading. Unless it's a safe attack. But, right. right. And there's a chance if he only has, say, two... He doesn't want to take a double Rancor hit, maybe? Yeah. And, and even here, if Jordan just had Rancor, you wouldn't attack the Boggle there. Yeah. However, he's not really going to get the chance. It's both Rancor and Ethereal Armor from Jordan. So now if there's two auras on it, it's 2-2 two, two First Strike, 2-0 oh, Trample. The Boggle is a 5-3 Trample First Strike. And that is a good limited card. And huge play from Van Meter blocks. Nature's claims the armor. So, so they're going to trade. The Boggle's going to go down here. Yeah, uh, perhaps a pretty aggressive attack by Jordan there. He did see Chris had flipped over a Nature's Claim. Yeah, there were two Spirit Mantles in Jordan's hand. He really didn't need to make this attack just yet. Mm -hmm. And really well played by Chris, leaving back the blocker, leaving back the mana, you know, dredging, knowing he was going to miss his land yeah. drop, and it really paid off for him. I think that's the read you could have had on Jordan's side. Chris kept a one lander and intentionally stuck on one. You know, he, he didn't even try to draw a second land. Mm -hmm. There's no way Chris is keeping that hand on doing that if nothing was castable. Mm -hmm. We don't know what spell he had, except then you look at the graveyard on that second dredge six, Chris actually milled a nature's claim. So there's another tell. Hey, Chris is playing this card. Right. And that's the thing about dredge. It, it does a really good job of masking the fact that this is what Chris is up to, because there's a lot of dredges where his board looks very different already at this point. Third land from Jordan, no replacement creature. We go back to Chris, and now he gets the hit he wants. It's a copy of Mana Confluence. He finds his second land, mm -hmm. and now we'll see what he can do with it. Bloodgast comes out of the graveyard to start. And there was no creature for Jordan, but he does have a fetch land, and we see now, I assume we're going to find Dryad Arbor, because his hand is just full up on auras. Oh, we're going to start spirit mantling a Dryad Arbor? you got to get something going. You cannot just let Ooh. Chris make this land drop and start casting spells. It's risky. Uh, Chris could have something like uh, maybe that Golgari Charm. You know, there's just unlikely that he has Dark Blast here, but it is a card that is likely to be in a 75. Sure, yeah, he goes gets the Dryad Arbor. 18 life points apiece. Fourth land drawn here by Chris. He's got Spirit Mantle, two Spirit Mantles, two Rankers, and a Daybreak Coronet. So if he wants to go in on this Dryad Arbor, he... It can happen. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the pickup for this turn was Razor Verge Thicket, which will Ooh, enter the battlefield yeah. tap. I assume his best line here is just Rancor, Rancor, hope for the best. That certainly pushes damage the fastest. Mm -hmm. The Spirit Mantle by itself doesn't do a whole lot. Remove the, the rule of spell that Chris might cast, you know, maybe he has Collective Brutality in his deck. I don't know why. Yeah, well, he, well look at this. It if kills Core Spirit Dancer. If you look at Chris's graveyard, there is a Golgari charm in it. Mm -hmm. So Jordan, that should be on the on the radar for Jordan. Certainly. You you definitely have to wonder how many Golgari charms Chris could possibly be playing. When it comes to Nature's Claim, the odds of a second copy were very high. When it comes to Golgari charm, it's not the best okay. position card in modern. So it looks like Chris Jordan's going to choose a safe line here. The first card he leads out on is a copy of Spirit Mantle onto the Dryad Arbor. He wants to know if that resolves. Once he sees that it does, then he says, "Okay." No Golgari Charm. All right, now I'll put the Rancor on it now that it's a 2-2. Yeah, elects to not get in for any damage yet. He knows that Chris is missing land drops. This is all that Chris has done so far. He has a 1-1 one, one and a 2-1. Jordan's so, safe for a while. So I actually like this on Jordan's side because if this Dryad Arbor survives and it has a Daybreak Coronet and a Spirit Mantle on it, I don't care what Chris is doing. Like, Chris is never racing that. Right. A, and a First Strike Lifelink protection from creatures that... 
So Jordan's giving, he's saying, I'm going to deal no damage this turn, but I'm going to build this juggernaut of a Dryad Arbor. And if I get there, who cares? I win. Yeah, yeah, this, this is, this is actually a lot better than the line I suggested with the double Rancor. I do like this play quite a lot. And if that Coronet sticks, the only thing that Chris could have, unless he drew it, is going to be another Nature's Claim, right? Golgari Charm, he has cleared the way for that. That would have been cast. And now, if, so Chris is going to play land three. But I like what you're saying. Now if Jordan ends up going for the, the Daybreak Coronet, he doesn't have to worry about Chris uh, blowing up one aura and then having the, co the Coronet fall off because mm. it's no longer And with the Spirit Mantle there. in place, right. Chris can't even catch him in combat if he had a legal blocker. Right. Because no blocker is legal when you have a Spirit Mantle. If, he can get, if Jordan can get all these auras on the Dryad Arbor, it's, it's lights out. Mm -hmm. Chris draws Razorbird Copperline Gorge. It's his third land. He flashes back Faithless Looting. He drew the cards off Faithless Looting, too. He looks like he, he dredged once and then drew. So a Narc Amoeba into the yard, but a pass. He, he's looking for some of his sideboard cards again. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the difficulties of the matchup. I think he sees the writing on the wall if something like a Daybreak Coronet or Unflinching Courage shows up. And if he does not have that enchantment removal, he can't win this game anyway. Right, actually, correction, he didn't dredge at all. He just drew two. He's just trying to hit these, these yep, cards. exactly. Now we're back to Jordan's side. He got to untap with a boggle. Now those two auras you see on the bottom of the screen, those are on the Dryad Arbor in the middle. Jordan has separated them because the Arbor is also a land. Mm -hmm. And here, Jordan has the mana to cast. Daybreak Coronet, the second ranker, can really go to town on this turn. Yeah, the draw was Windswept Heath. He'll get a basic Plains. Chris is tapped out. This is, it's unlikely that Chris has a removal spell for this. And with, with the fetching the land here, that means he can Spirit Mantle plus Coronet instead of casting a Rancor. Here we go, and that's what he'll do. Swing with the Arbor. So, Coronet gives 3-3. Three, three. The Mantles make it 5-7. It is an 8-6 First Strike Trample Protection from Creatures Life Link Vigilance. And what I like about having double Mantle instead of double Rancor is now if Chris had two Nature's Claims, Jordan's still insulated against that. Yeah, it's also um, in the future Chris can't claim and block or something like that. Mm -hmm. No, this is... I like everything Jordan's doing here. Yeah. I think there, really there well. was a hiccup early on by losing that first boggle. Mm -hmm. But he's, he's recovered in style. Yes. Jordan up to 22. That hit puts Chris down to 9. The, right now the Arbor's only 8 power, but you have to think one more aura of any type will make it lethal. Yep. And we know that Jordan has that second rank aura. Chris's hand, 3 Stinkweed Imps, 2 Golgari Grave Trolls. The aptly named Stinkweed Him. Yeah. <laughs> when, it's in your, when it's in your hand, <laughs> that card sure stinks. So sometimes Stinkweed Imp is your entire game plan. If you get hit by a Ley Line of the Void, you get hit by a Rest in Peace, casting Stinkweed Imp is all you can do. It is very far from enough here. Uh, Chris picked up a third land, but unclear that he really can do anything with it at this point. And there you go. Chris picks up his card. Jordan Pollack, your winner. Uh, round one here over Chris Van Meter. A tough matchup here for Dredge. Game one is a, really a non-starter for Chris. But when we get to game two, both decks are, are playing their style. And you see just how this is. The, we talked about the Green Red Hexproof decks having good and bad matchups. How this one really swings in its side. And these are two decks that are...